What's going on there folks? Good uh, Saturday afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this July 9th, 2022 date, about 1.24 p.m. California time. A latest quake shows a 2.0 in the area of Southern California. Notice though that we haven't really seen too much activity ramping up here along the eastern section of the Pacific Plate. More so on the west, we're getting a major push of activity here around the um, areas around the Java Trench and the Indonesia Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the USGS map showing the movement over the last 24 hours. And there's that big push of activity uh, over there around the in Indonesia area. Also around the southern end here of the Java Trench getting a swarm of earthquake activity uh, into the five range it looks like. Uh, 5.2, couple fives in there uh, in the Java Trench region. Further up north as well, um, looks like uh, some uh, pretty shallow earthquake activity ramping up here. The majority of this, these earthquakes are somewhat deep though, about 50 kilometers into the uh, subduction zone there of the Java Trench. Uh, so got to watch this area pretty closely. It's under quite a bit of strain. Uh, incredible slip rate in this area. It doesn't take too long to build up a lot of strain uh, before an earthquake uh, uh, could be released. We did see some further activity here around the Tonga Trench. We're looking for that deep movement. We got some more deep movement, but uh, not that large scale activity I was kind of watching for, uh, but we did see a couple deep earthquakes here around 538 kilometers deep uh, with some subsequent activity up here around the Kermadec Trench. And of course, a big push of earthquake activity uh, further up into this region here. Uh, it's a big crunch zone. That's kind of what I like to call it, the crunch zone, because a lot of stuff here is at play. You get movement here from the east, heading directly up in this region around the Philippine Plate and through the Indonesia area. And a lot, a lot of pressure also coming up here from the southwest, heading in this direction here. Uh, that makes that Java Trench area a pretty dangerous zone. Of course, we know some big mega quakes can happen up there on that area or down here on this area, I should say. Uh, looking up here to the north, still looking at some earthquake activity around the Mariana Trench, although it looks like it's come to a, uh, a temporary pause. Uh, last one was at 1243 uh, UTC time, which puts it at about uh, well, man, eight hours ago, the last quake in that area. Uh, further up north around the Japan area, still seeing some movement uh, working its way into the Kurokam Chaka Trench, three of these earthquakes here, uh, pretty deep into the uh, subduction zones. Some further movement throughout the uh, uh, Lucian Trench as well. But notice though, folks, and this is kind of what I what I like to mention, uh, when we see ongoing forward movement here, uh, further release of pressure, uh, well, you gotta remember, it's built up of pressure, but also at the same time kind of releasing some pressure. Uh, and what, what that does here, you gotta have pressure, right? To, to great earthquakes but when we're looking at all this earthquake activity here we tend to go quiet along the western states and the south america region and that's clear as day in today's map here very clear uh, that activity has worked its way westward a little bit more like i mentioned here around the uh, andaman sea area looks like they're getting back in on some of the action overnight felt like there was a bug on me um and a little bit of earthquake activity here in India. It looks like they had a 4.5 late last night. Not a whole lot of large scale activity further to the west here, but uh, it's working that way. And pretty much draw an arrow in this direction uh, where the pressure will be uh, at the greatest. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, United States here where there's not a whole lot of activity, at least 2.5 and above. Uh, one earthquake offshore is the Vista area. Pretty shallow earthquake, 2.6, and some movement up here into the lake. Uh, looks like around the Lake Almanor area. Let me zoom in here. Yep, right underneath the lake. Maybe right there at the, uh, wow, right around the uh, peninsula area, looks like. Just off the uh, shore there, 2.7. Beautiful area. I know they did have that deadly fire up there, so a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of stuff burned in that region. Uh, let's bring up the all magnitudes here and see what we got as far as swarming goes. We were watching for some potential movement uh, down here. Well, we did see a little bit of small quakes here in the Salton Sea area. But it uh, looks like that swarming has come to a stop. Nothing's shown up here within the last hour. 
Uh, just a couple small microquakes around the uh, looks like San Bernardino Mountains area and uh, some movement up north. Uh, getting this fashion here across the uh, just north of the Garlock Fault Zone. You got the Wheeler Ridge and uh, White Wolf Faults and there's a couple other that kind of spread in this fashion here uh, creating these mountains, the grapevine area uh, around the Tehachapi area. Uh, some movement through the Ridgecrest region. Also over here to the west Santa Maria, San Luis Obispo. Looks like a couple small microquakes on that uh, area of California and also up and down the, the uh, San Andreas Fault at the creeping section. All seeing some movement today but uh, Again, this is just some light activity, very light activity. No major swarms to report. The typical swarming that we see up here around the Cobb Mountain area of Clear Lake is the hydrothermal fields and the, uh, the operations there ongoing with uh, creating some power. But aside from that, uh, what do we got up north here? A little bit of movement outside of Vancouver area. Looks like a 2.4 in the Cedar area of Canada. 19 kilometers for that earthquake. Intermountain West region is relatively quiet. Some activity throughout Oklahoma. Uh, looks like north of Enid as well. Uh, eastern part of the country, pretty quiet. Puerto Rico, not a whole lot going on out there today. Again, South America as well. Um, the big push right now is kind of pointing towards this area. Uh, the Java Trench, the Andaman Sea, uh, the Philippine Plate. This whole area has been under the gun um, over the past couple days here. So just got to watch that. Again, that teeter-totter effect in full, in full effect right now uh, as far as the movement goes here along the Western Pacific, the Philippine Plate, and throughout the Indonesia Islands area. Got that general swarm pattern of consistent pressure and movement in that area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, I don't believe we have too much going on there. Looks like uh, eh, not a whole lot going on there. That, that, uh, this earthquake right here looks like it could be from, when was that? looks kind of distant not for sure exactly where this one's at it doesn't look too localized here to the park though but as uh, far as earthquake swarms go not a whole lot going on maybe uh maybe a little activity here you guys see that some very small microquakes at uh the pitstone plateau area not really showing up on any of the other seismograph stations uh, for the most part. So it's all generally light activity confined here uh, to this region, this seismograph station. Run over the solar weather activity real quick here since last night. See what we got. Looks like we did have another flare kick up. Look at that. Uh, look at the global D layer absorption map up north. Whew. Uh, let's see. Did have another C flare kick up. Not a big one. Of course, we had that long duration M flare last night. Uh, since then, we've had almost that almost kicked up into the M flare category. Looks like a C uh, 8.2 peaking out there, uh, all coming from these uh, sunspots. 3053, which is growing pretty nicely. 3055 is getting pretty dynamic down here as well. Uh, so these are the two main sunspots to currently watch. Got a trail of development around 3053, stretching towards the far eastern limb of the sun. 85% uh, chance of a C flare, 35% chance for an M flare, and it looks like a 10% chance, elevated chance there of X flare uh, potential from these sunspots. The probability details outline 3055 and 3053. Those are the ones right here uh, that are kind of popping out there. They're, you know, they want to. They want to provide us with maybe a show or two. A couple, couple good ones there. I know a lot of people think solar flares, you know, are, are bad. I, I don't necessarily think they are bad. They're, they're, um, the Earth goes through cycles. The sun goes through cycles, and it's all part of the, uh, the uniform system. I, you know, kind of these these flares are meant to be. And one of these days, we're going to get popped with a good one, and uh, you know, it potentially could bring down the power systems here on earth if we get a direct kill shot uh, not saying i want that to happen because i'm kind of an internet guy i'm on the internet 24 7 so um yeah that wouldn't be good but it is cool to see the potential for auroras at the uh the, the states the state level um i'd love to see some down here in california so it's kind of what i'm hoping for when i say i want some some good flares and a large cme facing us hitting us but uh, the kill shot, probably not. I really don't. Uh, I don't think anybody wants that because I'm. I mean, I, I could survive a little bit. I'm off the grid type guy, so I could. Uh, I could definitely make 
um, utilize the items that I have for off-grid living. Let's see, uh, what do we got here right now? Coronal Hole activity is facing us as well, 99, 98, one way up north. Uh, this one right here, if we get if we get some solar wind stream heading towards us, and also a subsequent uh, large CME uh, and a large from a flare, large flare from these sunspots, we could be looking at a uh, pretty good uh, solar storm coming up. If that plays in part, it's got to be everything's all got to work out. Um, <clears throat> it's got to have a system. Everything's got to be exactly lined up in order to get a nice. Um, event here on earth so man lose my voice again <clears throat> goodness alrighty well uh, let's see here so we'll um ch -ch 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 we'll get off here for a little bit uh, just gonna enjoy the day it's supposed to be about 97 degrees today here again hot of course it's hot everywhere pretty nice sunspots alrighty guys have a good day stay safe out there and of course be prepared keep an eye on some regions out there around the globe uh, definitely pretty active. Look at all this activity here on the uh, on the globe in the New Zealand area. I know the uh, USGS has shown a couple of those earthquakes, but there's actually quite a bit more than uh, what the USGS is showing there on their map. So EMSC on the globe here showing quite a bit of deep earthquake activity. Uh, looks like the uh, Kermadec Trench and the Tonga Trench areas. And that could explain the subsequent uh, shallower earthquake activity down here in the North Island. Some pretty recent quakes down there in this whole area. So, all right, guys, uh, stay safe out there. Have a good day. We'll be back here a little bit later tonight. And uh, well, we've got 3.4 kicking up here in Alaska right now. All righty, take care. Stay cool if you can. And we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight. Peace out, everyone.